I made a video recently about CCTV featuring this bathroom cabinet that I mounted CCTV cameras to. And while making it, I had a thought. I just said the word subnet and set an IP for the ethernet connection on the same subnet as the cameras. How many people know what the heck subnet means? Hence, this video. Hopefully, this basic explainer will help you understand your network a little better. I'm going to start with hardware since it's relatively simple. Wiring something with an ethernet cable is better than using Wi-Fi. This is absolute and unchangeable. There is no getting around the fact that signals going down a wire are more reliable than radio waves being broadcast and received. Even if a speed test says your Wi-Fi speeds are good, the fact it's wireless is adding latency and packets are being lost. And that is no good for games. If your console or PC is on Wi-Fi and the only reason you're losing the game is because it's lagging, make sure none of your neighbors are microwaving anything. Microwaves disrupt Wi-Fi like nobody's business. So use an ethernet cable and get back to the top of the leaderboard like you deserve. The simplest way to connect a device to a network is plugging it into a switch. There's probably a switch on the back of your router. This is a standalone one, but look for multiple ethernet ports in a row. When I say switch, I mean a network switch like this, not a light switch. But since most routers have them built in, chances are you can plug in without needing to buy anything else. But some so-called smart routers forego this switch with just two ports on the back. One for the wide area network, aka the internet, and another for the local area network. So to plug more than one thing in, you'll need to buy a standalone switch like this. Basic switches are so commodified that they're dirt cheap. Just make sure the one you buy says gigabit. Gigabit means attached devices can communicate at around 1024 megabit per second, and it's used by the vast majority of devices you'll find. Heck, I have two and a half gig switches, and only four of my devices actually use that speed. Everything else is gigabit. Notice that I said bit, not byte. A byte is eight bits, so 1024 megabit is about 128 megabytes. In practice, you won't get more than 150 megabytes per second transferring files, even at the best of times. The reason why is because at these speeds, the same lines that are used to transfer the data are also used for telling the data where to go, which uses up bandwidth. I saw the same reduction on the cheap two and a half gig NAS that I built a while ago. If you're unable to use an ethernet cable due to distance or I don't know, your dad won't let you cut holes in the walls, the next best thing to use is a power line adapter. These use the power wiring in your house to transmit network signals. They're not as good as an ethernet cable, but they're a heck of a lot better than Wi-Fi. When I say network, I actually mean LAN, local area network. You probably know what a LAN party is. Get a whole bunch of sweaty gamers in one place to headshot each other and drink a swimming pool's worth of Mountain Dew. Personally, I prefer Monster. The local in LAN refers to a network of a limited number of devices, typically in the same building or area as one another. This could be your house, a university, an office building. The point is, is that they're all close to one another. Each device needs an identity on the network like an address on a map. That identity is usually shown with an IP address. Two devices on a network cannot have the same IP. Think of it like having two houses with the same number. You'd get each other's mail and visitors would be lost. Just like data, if two devices have the same IP. An IPv4 address is a group of four numbers. Each of the four numbers can be between zero and 255. The most common IP you'll find is 192.168.0.1. That's the default IP for almost all consumer routers. The reason it starts with 192.168 is that years and years ago, that block of IPs was reserved for local networks. And even though modern routers will let you change it to almost anything, the default still follows the old rules. The third and fourth numbers in the address is where it can get complex. IP addresses are like a combination lock. So each entry in the third segment has 255 entries in the fourth. That means the total number of IPv4 addresses is about 4.3 billion. 255 times 255 times 255, or two to the power of 32, which is actually a problem as we've been running out of public IPv4 addresses for a while now. Luckily, IPv6 has many more possible addresses, but we don't have to worry about that for now, unless you know you have four billion Internet of Things devices in your house. Each of the first three numbers in an IP address defines a subnet. So everything on 192.168.1 
can communicate with everything else on the dot one subnet easily. That's why I set the IP of my CCTV server to 1.1 so it could talk to the cameras with their default IP of 1.64. To make IP addresses more human readable, your router will translate them into host names using DNS, domain name service. If you open up command prompt and type ping google.com, you can see DNS is translating 142.250.176.14 into the human-friendly google.com. The same is true on your LAN. That's how I can type backslash backslash chimerasaurus into File Explorer to access my backup server without memorizing an IP address. And yes, all of my servers are named after dinosaurs. I really like dinosaurs. I, I mean, I moved to the Morrison formation for goodness sake. To control whether devices on different subnets can talk to one another, you can change their subnet mask. You may have even seen this in menus if you've ever changed your console's network settings. It's a group of four numbers, like an IP, but what it does is mask out what that device can and can't see on the network. So having a subnet mask of 255.255.255.255 means it can't see anything, and 0.0.0.0 means it can see all 4 billion other addresses. Usually, you want to keep it on 255.255.255.0, so your devices can only communicate on their own subnet and nowhere else. The last setting you're likely to see in common network settings is gateway. This one is really easy. This is just the address of your router. The gateway out of your LAN onto the WAN, or the internet. Like I said earlier, this is almost always 192.168.0.1, unless you change it. That's simple. But hey, you've probably noticed that even though all this is going in the background, you don't have to manage any of this when you just connect something to Wi-Fi. Well, that's because automatic network settings are provided by your router's DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol server. For the most part, this will handle everything in the background, so you don't have to think about it. It's only when you're on a network with no DHCP, like my air-gapped CCTV server, when all these manual settings become relevant again. So there you go. In theory, you now know basically all you need to about your local network. The main takeaway that you should have is that you should go plug your console or PC in with an ethernet cable instead of using Wi-Fi. It's okay. I'll wait. If I missed anything obvious, and I'm pretty sure I did, please let me know in the comments. As far as I can tell, writing this alone in my house, I got everything. Bear in mind that I am not a network engineer. So if you are, please be nice. My brain is very smooth, and it's amazing I've made it this far. I'll see you next time.